you, and welcome to Democracy Week 2021. You are joining us for the session Best Practices for International Democratization Initiatives, where we will draw lessons from Georgia. This session is hosted by the European Network for Political Foundations, also known as ANOP. My name is Hoba Gul. I am co-chair of the Working Group uh, Democracy for ANOP, and today I will be your moderator. ANOP uh, is started in 2006 as a joint platform for political foundations for engaging with EU institutions and other organizations. We bring together 54 member organizations from 22 uh, countries from the EU and the UK. Six political groups from the European Parliament are represented in the network. The European People's Party, the European Conservatives and Reformists, Renew Europe, the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats, the Greens, or European Free Alliance, and the Confederal Group of European United Left, or Nordic Green Left. This broad spectrum affiliated represents the political diversity of the European democratic landscape and gives ENOP a unique approach. Political foundations act as a bridge builder between political actors, decision makers, CSOs, and institutions in the partner countries. They help promoting democracy and developing pluralistic societies. ENOP brings them together. And it is in this way that today we will bring uh, political foundations and we'll be zooming in on the country, Georgia, and our work here. Before we start with the program, some ground rules. We'd like to ask you to keep your video on so we can see who is in the audience and you can see your peers. Then it would be great if you could keep your microphone on mute. Once, uh, you, can, once you ask a question, we'll ask you to unmute yourself and you have the floor. Every block will end with a Q&A for the speaker and you can write your questions down in the chat. My colleagues in the studio will forward me your name and the question and I will give you the floor. Now, we can look at the program. We will start today with drawing lessons from Georgia and capacity building projects in Georgia with Levan, uh, who is the executive director for the Eastern European Center for Multi-Party Democracy. He will give us a broad overview of the political context in Georgia, the place in which the political foundations of ENOP move. Um, then we will speak to Christian Leux from Haya von Sombre Foundation, um, the political foundation affiliated to the Dutch Liberal Party, VVD. Then we move on to Georgia, where we'll speak with Lilia, program coordinator for democratization projects of the Green Heinrich Böll Stiftung, the Tbilisi office. Finally, we have Astrid Frey with us, program manager of the Christian Democratic Eduardo Frey Stichting. Um, and then we have a final block of a Q&A for all speakers. Thank you for joining us today, and with no further ado, I would like to welcome Levan. Levan, you have the floor. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Levan. Uh, we can ask, I would like to ask you to unmute yourself. Yes, great to have you. Levan, maybe you can start off by introducing yourself and telling us a bit more about the EECMD. Well, first of all, thank you very much for this great opportunity to speak uh, to this very interesting and distinguished audience. It's a real pleasure, uh, especially to do so in the very difficult political uh, conditions in the country and in the run up to uh, the local elections, which are very important um, uh, um, uh, uh, in, in, in Georgia's recent uh, development and, and political trajectory in general. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm Levan Tsutskiridze. I'm the executive director of uh, Eastern European Center for Multi-Party Democracy. And uh, this organization uh, used to be the part of a larger uh, Netherlands Institute for Multi-Party Democracy network. And we started off working in Georgia uh, already more than a decade ago in 2000 nine uh, and uh, since then we are working to uh, support political party building and institution building in general that relates to elections and political representation we work on improving and strengthening democratic political culture uh, throughout georgia as well as in other countries and we work to facilitate political dialogue on different uh, issues that matter and are important in the given 
contexts um, in, in, um, in the countries where we operate. In 2017, we uh, became an independent Georgia-based uh, NGO, which is now the Eastern European Center for Multi-Party Democracy. And we are currently working in Georgia. We have uh, uh, programming in Ukraine, in Moldova, as well as in Kyrgyzstan. And we generally try to implement all the activities that I just mentioned in all the countries where we are active uh, right now. So this is it for a very brief introduction on my end. Thank you, Lathan. I'm uh, wondering uh, to immediately delve into the subject matter. Since uh, you have been at the EECMD, have you noticed any particular changes in the political sphere in Georgia? It's been uh, it's been a long time since I've been working there, and I think um, there have been uh, what I could what I could try to do is to break down this entire period into perhaps uh, the three important stages. Gladly. When we started to operate our work in uh, in, in Georgia, that was in uh, 2000, 2009. Uh, this was uh, a very interesting period from two thousand nine to two thousand twelve. Uh, we've seen a series of uh, constitutional reforms and electoral reforms in the country, as well as the emergence of uh, a very strong opposition uh, coalition uh, in Georgia in the face of the Georgian dream, which later on supplanted the, um, uh, the then ruling party, the United National Movement, led by Mikhail Saakashvili. Now, in this period, uh, as I... Uh, I uh, would like to see it was a period of um, very vibrant um, political competition and that political competition was of course very fierce but also at, uh, promising to graduate into uh, more forward-looking, more inclusive, more multi-party democratic setting uh, overall in the country but also uh, in the parliament and in other institutions. We've been seeing a lot of uh, reform proposals coming from all sides uh, of the political spectrum and some capacity of political parties to sit together and uh, hammer out some differences, uh, not all, of course, but some. Mm -hmm. uh, the government that itself by then, uh, uh, uh, that's my impression, was uh, somewhat more responsive to what the international partners of Georgia uh, were, were seeing and uh, were feeling or were advising uh, to the Georgian uh, government. So it was uh, looking forward to its good image with its European and, and uh, North American partners and was truly eager to see Georgia graduate uh, you know, more strongly and solidly into a more European type of a state. Mm -hmm. and that was maybe the first stage which ended uh, with uh, with the victory of the opposition uh, coalition in 2012 and that was that was the the first constitutional change of the government which occurred according to the constitutional uh, terms uh, peacefully and through elections mm -hmm. so no wonder this period was for georgia and uh, probably for all the georgia watchers uh, the period of democratic euphoria and democratic enthusiasm. So 2012, 2014, 15 were these years when we've seen we, we had in power a relatively more inclusive coalition in the face of the Georgian Dream Coalition, which was then led by uh, one of the richest or, or the richest yeah. person in Georgia, uh, Bidzina Ivanishvili. Uh, this was, as I said, a period of high hopes uh, because the Georgian Dream government was inclusive. It had in its coalition different pro-democracy movements, different pro-democracy uh, political leaders. Um, so everyone around was hopeful that, yeah, Georgia was on the right path to institutionalize the, the, the, this, this tradition of changing governments uh, through elections, but also introducing important reforms um, based on which actually the Georgian dream came to power. So reform of the judiciary, reform of the electoral system, uh, depolitization of uh, the law enforcement uh, and, and security services. 
But very soon, unfortunately, this democratic enthusiasm started to wane. Uh, so beginning of 2014, we already see um, a relatively slow, but it seems a quite permanent a setting in of, uh, of the democratic decline. So from these years up to now, from 2014, 2015, we see a relatively smaller uh, decline in democracy scores in, in Georgia's uh, ratings, whether it's uh, Economist Intelligence Unit and Democracy Index or, or Freedom House rankings, you see some small changes. And then after a while, uh, that that decline accelerates and now is at a full speed uh, in the country as we speak. So Georgia's uh, conditions in terms of democratic government, especially in terms of democratic culture, have deteriorated very rapidly. And today uh, Georgia resembles a country that is on its path of becoming uh an isolated uh failed state again unfortunately due to the gradual rolling back of georgia's democratic achievements uh setting in of probably uh, new foreign uh, relations priorities distancing of the government from uh, from the eu and from eu mediated eu mediated deals which uh, last year including many many positive reforms for the elections of the general prosecutor, the reform of the judiciary and the electoral systems. All that has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. And right now we find ourselves in a country which is governed by a political party that is um, whose democratic legitimacy is uh, very much eroded. Uh, even though it claimed a victory in the uh, in last parliamentary elections, uh, very debatable, but still, mm -hmm. uh, the government that is distancing itself from uh, EU aspirations, it seems, and uh, the, the general more fundamental values on which really the true liberal democracy really rests, and government that is becoming more and more isolated in its solitude and enjoyment of power. Yes. Uh, just a couple of days ago, and then I will um, uh, stop to allow for the continuation of uh, the conversation, uh, a massive leak of documents uh, mm -hmm. uh, appeared online, uh, allegedly coming, that has to be still verified, coming from the security services of Georgia, a massive volume of information uh, indicated that we actually live in a surveillance state, more like Russia's Kremlin Putin regime than a truly genuinely democratic and, uh, and forward looking government. The leaks indicate that government and its key figures have direct connections with violent extremist groups mm -hmm that have been responsible for violently beating up the, the participants of human rights and LGBT Pride Week uh, just in a yeah. couple of months ago, up to the extent of directly funding and providing them with the state uh, contracts, and eavesdropping on massive level uh, on the clergy, on CSOs, and on the diplomatic corps. Uh, according to these leaks, the office of the EU embassy, including the EU, EU ambassador, US embassy representatives and other embassies were being wiretapped. Well, of course, that all has to be verified. But some people who have been mentioned in those documents have confirmed that they accurately reflect what they have been saying. Yes. So that is for me, I think, a really a very stark, very dangerous and outrageous reminder or a signal that Georgia is fundamentally on the wrong path today. Level. So that would be my response to your question. Thank you. Thank you for giving us this uh, overview. But Levan, in this context, I do wonder what can international actors do with this backslide? What can be our role? International actors. Yes, the international actors are, I think, the, the only reliable uh, allies 
of uh, a very small but still quite vibrant and energetic pro-democracy middle class in Georgia. Unfortunately, yes. that middle class is very small, but still, I think, uh, support to this pro-democracy movements, support to these people and to those networks remain, remain, remain crucial. I think that there are a couple of things that uh, international community could do with yes. this regard. Now, first of all, I think there must be a stronger quid pro quo when, when talking about foreign aid and assistance to especially to particular political institutions, political parties here. I think the time for cherry picking, which many Georgian uh, political parties or individual politicians have enjoyed, should come to an end. The current level of uh, polarization, the current level of radicalization, mm -hmm. the current level of really abandoning the democratic path, and, and we see that, that the government is determined to do so, call for a more energetic engagement rather than disengagement in the country, but yeah. that, has to be, uh, that has to be more conditional. Then, of course, there are people who openly challenge democratic uh, aspirations of the country, who openly make statements against uh, uh, democratic institutions in the country. And, that, and, I, and I think those groups and those politicians should be kicked out from European networks. There should be sanctions on people who support it tacitly or directly or indirectly with with uh, back-end funding and uh, clandestine uh, support to uh, radical, anti-democratic, uh, anti-liberal, uh, political and violent groups. Uh, I hear very often that maybe a harsher EU response, harsher response from our European counterparts may lead to uh, some circles in the Georgian government or in political life really uh, disengage from these relations and maybe turn more toward the north or, or the Russian uh, yes. orbit. But I think that's, that's not quite accurate. I think uh, that is already happening. So I think there should be a more clear-eyed, more realistic outlook here. Uh, whatever pro-democracy groups in the country remain, they need to be more solidly supported. This time we, we've seen in, in July this year that a large mob of about 500 people stormed the offices of civil society groups in the country, attacked the journalists, and one journalist unfortunately died in consequence to those attacks, not opposed by police, and these people, most of them who encouraged uh, this violence, are still unpunished. So I think this, this uh, shrinking space for yes. CSO, shrinking space for genuinely democratic political life in the country must be better protected. That can happen for, again, more uh, higher level and more for, uh, from uh, higher uh, engagement uh, in, in, in Georgia's uh, affairs, but also better access to uh, a quicker sources of funding Mm -hmm. and institutional stability. This is not the time when uh, in Georgia you could have heard, you know, from distant quarters, from the fringes of political life, some anti-democratic statements, anti-CSO statements, anti-liberal statements. We leak the Georgia of today, this anti-democratic sentiment is the mainstream. Yes. Current Georgian political situation is the situation when there is a deliberate, mm -hmm. targeted, and really focused effort to really destroy the democratic foundation of the country, to, to, to sideline truly democratic actors, be it on the NGO level or the media level or political level, and supplant them with pseudo organizations that may rhetorically speak about human rights, but in practice really persecute human rights defenders and people who really do care about democracy. So this anti-democratic statement has truly established itself in the mainstream of the government, which is allied with clerical radical elements in the Georgian, uh, in the Georgian church. Mm -hmm. And also we see a direct support to some civil type of political movements in the country that are openly physically attacking pro-democracy 
uh, NGOs and democracy leaders. So this is the time to more energetically support these people who are still in Georgia. Yes. Uh, and who are still capable of putting up a good fight in the name of democracy. Levan, I would like to truly thank you for giving us this very clear mission today as well. Um, we will now, uh, I would like to tell the audience, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will deal with it at the end of this session when we have Levan back for the Q&A. Thank you, Levan. We will now continue towards one of the actors um, from, um, working in Georgia. I have with me Christian Lux from the Haya Fonsomra Foundation. Christian, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself in just a few words, if you can, and your foundation too. Yes, of course. Uh, my name is Christian Lux, and I work for VVD International. I'm uh, the international officer that's responsible for our uh, uh, contacts and projects in Eastern Europe, the Caucasus and the Balkans. Um, I started working at the international department of the VVD right after my studies. Um, I studied history. I was specialized in Russian history. After that, I did uh, Eastern European studies. So uh, now I work and travel to the, uh, yeah, the same region I studied for so many years, and that's really amazing. I love Eastern European cultures. I love uh, its people. And I have to say, um, yeah, I'm not really fond of its dem democratic decline, of course, mm -hmm. but I'm uh, still very interested in uh, its politics. Um, SL VVD International yes. is the uh, international foundation of uh, the Dutch Liberal Party, the VVD. And we are active in uh, Europe and the regions around Europe. And we invest a lot in the capacity building of our sister parties over there. Um, I will not uh, tell too much about it because we have a very special uh, clip that explains our activities in two minutes. I think we can play the video now. Nice to meet you. We are VVD International. Our team maintains the international relations of the Dutch Liberal Party the People's Party for Democracy and Freedom. We are based in The Hague, the Netherlands. The VVD was founded in 1948 and generally is perceived as a centre-right conservative liberal party. The party is a strong protagonist of the rule of law and individual freedom. Other liberal principles, such as equality of opportunity, tolerance and social justice, are perceived as fundamental values of a functioning democracy. The leader of the VVD is Mark Rutte, Prime Minister of the Netherlands since 2010. Being the biggest political party of the Netherlands and having been part of almost 20 cabinets, the VVD is also member of the Renew Europe faction, delivering five seats, making it one of the largest contributors of seats within this faction in the European Parliament. The main goal of VVD International is realising, maintaining and enhancing relationships with liberal sister parties and organisations globally. We achieve this by actively participating in international liberal networks and organizing activities abroad. One of our priorities is capacity building with liberal parties in the Balkans, in Eastern Europe, the Middle East, Northern Africa, and the Caucasus. Capacity building means activities through which vested parties develop the ability to effectively take part in politics, contribute to strengthening political parties or other forms of collective action. By means of capacity building, VVD International aims to support countries in these regions in their transition to a pluralist and democratic society governed by the rule of law. For more than 30 years, VVD International has successfully supported liberal political parties abroad. Through providing high-level trainings by our best trainers, politicians and experts, projects have been successfully implemented in many countries. Want to stay informed about our projects? Follow us on social media. Thank you. Thank you for showing us this uh, uh, overview of what Faith Day International does, Christian. And today you're invited here to talk about one specific project that you do in Georgia, which is the Liberal Leadership Academy. Could you tell us a bit more about what this project entails? Yes, of course. Yeah, you could all see the animation video, maybe to start with a small introduction. Um, we are active in many countries, uh, so as in uh, Georgia. And from starters, again, I love Georgia, I love culture, nature, people, and there's a very interesting geopolitical position for, uh, uh, for Europeans. But we have to agree that the domestic political situation in Georgia is quite a mess. And I'm not going to bother everybody with uh, the broken Michel Agreement, but for me, uh, from a liberal perspective, it's quite problematic that, for example, there are seven liberal parties existing and we are still counting. Um, moreover, it's not like those liberal parties have 34 or 24 seats in their parliament, um, mm -hmm. but they sometimes have even difficulties to exist uh, due to the threshold. 
Um, and there, uh, the Liberal Leadership Academy in Georgia comes in. Uh, the mm -hmm. Liberal Leadership Academy in Georgia is an academy that makes a contribution uniting those liberals uh, in Georgia. And it's uh, organized by a cooperation between the Dutch Liberal parties, VVD and D66, and the Europe Georgia Institute uh, this year. And uh, we get youngsters from different uh, liberal political parties and from different uh, liberal organizations, also LGBTI organizations, together in a hotel complex far away in the mountains. And uh, from there, they are isolated from their normal life. And from that moment, our amazing trainers start to train them on coalition management, uh, negotiation skills, and liberal values. And yeah, we try to make, uh, bring them uh, together and make them closer to each other, to make them listen, very important, and show them that their differences are not so big at all. Um, probably the best part of the academy is that it's organized by two competing liberal parties, uh, D66 and VVD. And this illustrates that even when you are uh, opponents in many situations, you can still cooperate with each other. That's a, that's a beautiful way of putting it. I think we have a video as well that can give you uh, an impression of what that looks like. And we're going to be playing the video. Yes. So the reason why I came to this training is because uh, it's very interesting to get an experience from a Dutch point of view. This was a really good chance for me to meet people, young people from other political parties who are willing to make positive changes in this society. And second is, well, Georgian liberal opposition parties are often very divided. Uh, and, and then we still have one main goal that we're working towards. So it's good to have events like this that we can uh, meet each other, connect and realize that in the end, um, we are way more similar than different. As people with liberal values, uh, we really have to stick together, especially in the countries like Georgia, where our neighbors are not very liberal. Putting guys in the same room and uh, pushing us to negotiate with each other and finding the common ground step by step it gets us closer to the level of democracy that we all want to experience and live in. There we go. Uh, it's good to see this in practice and especially the testimonials of the participants themselves. Now I've heard that this Liberal Leadership Academy is a project that you do in more countries. Could you elaborate a bit more on that? Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, we have one academy that's uh, uh, actually meant for uh, the European Union just, uh, or European countries. We have one for Croatia and one for Georgia. Um, yeah, the Croatian one and the Georgian one, of course, a targeted uh, towards uh, Georgians and uh, Croatians. And the European one targets high-level political talents from several European countries. So that's mm -hmm. difference uh, uh, non-content-wise. Content-wise, we focus more on individual political capacities within the European Academy. Uh, like storytelling and personal campaigning, yeah. uh, whereas in specific countries, oriented academies, we tend to focus more on, for example, cooperation, understanding the other, and coalition management. Yeah, and what makes this work for Georgia? Um, yeah, the, of course, uh, uh, Georgians, um, um, as I said, like uh, the liberal parties in Georgia are divided. Mm -hmm. And you see this as well, for example, in Croatia. And um, the, the reason why we focus more on cooperation and understanding the other is because we want to un unite those liberal forces together. Mm, and what do you think the participants gain from this type of training? Yeah, I think it's very important uh, in the end that they, um, they understand that it's uh, okay to be constructive. Yes. And that it's okay to understand the needs of the other and to, uh, yeah, to understand that it's in their own interest to know that and as well in their country's democracy's uh, interest um, to position themselves like that. Um, and I hope that they come close together during the event and as well that they build a network afterwards because, uh, yeah, in the end, we return to the Netherlands mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, they, we, we are not the ones to live in their country, so uh, they have to find each other themselves. And they have to, they have to continue together. Exactly. And how is their interaction with the, the Dutch trainers? that you put in front of the group, what does that look like? Yeah, you know it, we had uh, two amazing trainers, yes. uh, Sander Jansen and Ellen Bijsterbos. Uh, they both work in municipalities. Sander Jansen, uh, he works for uh, the VVD, and Ellen Bijsterbos, he works for the D66, although I want uh, Ellen Bijsterbos to work for the VVD as well. But we are still negotiating on that. Um, yeah, they were amazing together. Um, they yeah, only give a training like this once a year, but mm -hmm. it only seemed that they were a dynamic duo and they uh, gave the training uh, on a weekly basis. 
but uh, yeah, and also the participants were very respectful uh, to the uh, to the trainers, but well, but still with an informal attitude, mm. and I think that's uh, perfect. Uh, so in short, yeah, great trainers, great interaction. So there was a good interaction from the participants with the trainers and the connection, and then I wonder the participants they come from different parties. How do you select your partners in Georgia? How do you find them? Are you perhaps in touch with uh, EU institutions, yeah. delegations, embassies? Yeah, um, yeah, maybe it's good to talk first with our about our relationship with, with for example, the Dutch embassies yeah. in the other countries because, yeah, um, we have a good relationship with all uh, Dutch embassies in the country we are active in. We try to involve them in our work and we always listen to their advice. Um, and their advice is always very helpful, especially because they give local context. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we travel from the Netherlands to their country and, of course, our headquarters in The Hague, so we don't know a lot about their regional context. And, um, yeah, besides that, it's... It's sometimes a little bit hard to work with institutions that um, are neutral, uh, like mm -hmm. the, the institutions you mentioned, um, uh, because yeah, this is a political academy, for example, and with a clear ideology which is uh, it's supporting, uh, like the Liberal Leadership Academy, uh, and neutral institutions are understandably hesitant to mm -hmm. uh, be involved in that kind of work. But we always try to involve uh, institutions like the Europe Georgia Institute um, mm -hmm. or uh, fellow uh, uh, other institutions like the FNF, the Friedrich Naumann Foundation, to uh, cooperate in Which this. are also liberal foundations. Exactly. I see. So you find your liberal, within your liberal network, you find partners in the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you think are the, the biggest challenges for European foundations that are working in Georgia? Yeah. Um, well, uh, political parties and NGOs come and go in every country, of course. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, in Georgia, this is especially the case. Um, uh, this makes it hard to pursue long-term goals or uh, set long-term strategies with certain partners. Uh, to give you an example, the participants of the Liberal Leadership Academy, um, yeah, they, they, they are different uh, from different political parties or organizations every year. So, um, but on the other hand, academies like the Liberal Leadership Academy in Georgia uh, are most of the times introduced in such situations in which there's not re really a clear partner you can work with mm -hmm. and you still want to make a contribution to uh, uh, a country's party democracy. Yeah, and uh, I would also like to tell the audience uh, the floor is open for your questions as well. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat and I will give you the floor. Um, so while you do that, I'll still ask you a question, Christian. Um, what do you think that we can learn from your experiences in organizing the Liberal Leadership Academy and holding this project? Um, yeah, I think our demo democratization projects should focus more on understanding the other and being empathic instead of only focusing on speaking skills, for example. Mm -hmm. I think the Georgian case shows clearly that um, it's very important that uh, politicians uh, not only learn how to speak, but as well know how to listen. And before organizing this academy, actually, uh, I was not aware that the ability to listen was so uh, crucial to the functioning of a democracy. And what do you mean with that? <laughs> yeah, the, they were, uh, for example, with the coalition management training, they were uh, only um, thinking about what, what they want to achieve yeah. and not actually what the others want to achieve. And this way, of course, with coalition management, you have to know what the other, one, the other party wants to, to form a coalition. That's very interesting. Is there maybe some lessons that we can do, derive from this Georgia case that goes into a broader perspective? Yeah, I think, uh, of course, we are now in a coalition uh, <laughs> negotiation between this, uh, the, these parties who are sitting now uh, over here, like CDA, uh, D66 and VVD in the Netherlands. And uh, we have to do the same in the Netherlands. We have to be constructive. We have to know what the others want, and uh, then we can move forward. Mm. And so for other initiatives in different countries, this uh, coalition management, nego negotiation, and talking to each other should be core components yeah. of any international democratization program. Yeah. Where do you think more opportunities lie for Georgia? What, has, uh, what have you not done yet that would be beneficial for these participants? Mm. Well... Like uh, the Georgian Dream Coalition and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of course, uh, those participants uh, of that political party, they, the, the, the party is there. Yes. So, of course, and uh, we only want to work, for example, with the Liberal Party or with the Conservative Party or with the Social Democratic Party. But maybe we should consider that if people, a lot of people vote for a certain party, maybe we can even find Liberals or Conservatives or Social Democrats within that party itself. Ah. So that you keep on the dialogue with uh, with the big party, I think that's um, that would be very constructive from our side. Mm. But uh, I think this will be done in the future, probably. 
Thank you, Christian. Um, if there are no other questions for Christian, I would like to thank you for uh, telling us more about the Le Liberal Leadership Academy, Georgia specifically. Uh, we have a question. Neil, uh, I would actually like to give you the floor. I see that you have a question for Christian, and you can ask the question yourself. So you can unmute yourself, and we will hear and see you. Hi, uh, hopefully you can see me. Yes, you can, perfect. Um, hi, so I'm Neil Gandhi. I'm a Democratic Governance Advisor. Uh, I'm working at the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office here in London in the UK. And uh, thank you, thank you to, uh, to both speakers. Really interesting discussion um, and really helpful to get really into the detail of, of what's happening in Georgia, particularly as it's uh, more difficult to travel uh, to Georgia and being based in London, it feels uh, very, uh, very difficult to get a real grasp of what's happening there. Uh, you know, from the news, it's it's possible, but to only, only to a certain extent. My question, my question was about uh, maybe this is more for Yevan. Um, my question was about about the kind of democratic decline. Just exploring a bit more about why that's happening. So you know, political parties and some and some uh, and some other actors might be interested in uh, in promoting that democratic decline. But I'm interested in what the reasons are for that democratic decline. And um, and understanding about a bit more about about people's views about if people in Georgia, for example, are are kind of bought into democracy, or um, if some of the reason for that uh, for that democratic decline is because people are less bought into democracy and more more open to other forms of uh, of democratic governance. So I'm happy to answer for anybody to to answer that question. Neil, thank you so much for asking this question. Um, I think as an exception, we can ask Lefan uh, if he would like to answer it. Um, but all other questions to Lefan can be saved until the end of the session, where we'll do a more global session. Lefan, uh, are you there with us? And would you like to answer the question? Thank you, Neil, again. Absolutely. Uh, it's a great question. I'll try to delve perhaps very briefly on the maybe some underlying reasons of the democratic backsliding. Uh, and there are many, it's not just one, but uh, uh, I think Georgia is still uh, suffering from what I call the sandwich syndrome uh, of uh, political culture. And what I mean by that is that uh, in this country, uh, the consensus uh, and uh, agreement uh, and um, uh, uh, not really a zero-sum outlook in politics is unfortunately still considered as a sign of weakness as something really unacceptable by major political actors. But this comes partly from uh, neo-Bolshevik political tradition mm -hmm. in the country when, you know, uh, your competitors are not just com competitors, they are uh, your enemies. And on the other side, this also comes from the tradition of uh, Ill underground uh, national liberation movements, which also during the Soviet times considered uh, cooperation and collaboration something really undesirable. No, well, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, those two, uh, at the one uh, look, you know, countervailing forces produced mm -hmm. Uh, the political climate in the country, which is not really conducive to consensus and dialogue. Then, as I mentioned in the beginning, we also have very weak and very small middle class in this country. And uh, in the absence of a political leadership that is not genuinely committed to democratic transformation and pro-democracy agenda, it is very hard to carry forward this work only on the shoulders of few select NGOs and uh, civil society organizations and some individual politicians. In this country, uh, liberals and Democrats uh, are uh, still a minority. And I think part of our problem uh, uh, has been that we have not been able to really build better bridges with other segments and other parts of society and to explain better to them why really they need to be together with us in this work to promote democracy in this country. So there are a number of reasons that, uh, and of course, you also have COVID, which is accelerating these authoritarian uh, tendencies in this country, government wielding and politicizing pandemic response for its electoral and political gains. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also have this uh, hybrid warfare and foreign meddling which is becoming more and more notable 
this uh, Russian anti-democratic influence in the country. So you have a cocktail of things uh, here present. Thank you, Leifan. Thank you very much for answering this question in such a uh, clear way. Um, I would now like to move on. Please, if you have more questions for Leifan, say, put them in the chat and we'll get to it at the end. Um, and I'm now moving again to Georgia in the Tbilisi office of the Heinrich Böll Stifting. Lilia, welcome. Um, hello, everyone. And um, yeah, thank you uh, for inviting me um, to this great panel. Great. Lilia, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself and your foundation a bit more to our audience today. Um, yes, sure. So I'm Lilia Cichlatze, um, uh, Democratization Program Coordinator here in Tbilisi Office of the um, Heinrich Böll Foundation. Very briefly, I would um, start mm -hmm. um, uh, to explain uh, the main directions um, of the foundation. Well, first of all, um, the Heinrich Böll Foundation is a green political foundation um, as a think tank for green ideas and visions. We are part of uh, international um, uh, network uh, in composing more than 100 projects in 60 countries. Uh, the regional office of the uh, Royal Foundation was opened in Tbilisi in 2003. And our main goal is to contribute to democratization of Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. uh, we do support initiatives that open room for public participation on uh, democratic development, uh, social ecological transformation, and gender democracy. Very briefly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lilia. I was uh, wondering what is the what are the two projects specifically that you want to talk about today more to us? Maybe you can outline them. Yes, sure. Uh, so um, the, the, I would um, specifically focus on two directions uh, yeah. of our work, uh, social ecological transformation and gender democracy. First of all, um, for us, um, gender democracy is a cross-cutting issue in all our activities and we are very active in this direction because we do believe that um, feminist agenda should be part of the political and social uh, um, discourse. Um, and thus, uh, we are working in this direction. We have uh, our special website, um, feminist website, which we consider as a feminist platform where uh, feminist actors publish their blog posts, um, uh, um, uh, articles, research analysis, and so on, and underline the causes and topics that are important for feminist agenda in Georgia. How interesting. Um, I would focus, sorry? How interesting. Yes, um, uh, we are also very much. Uh, uh, putting lots of uh, efforts, let's say, uh, from different program directions, um, yes, um, in this website. Um, uh, the project that I will focus today um, is the project that we funded and implemented together with our long-term partner, Women's Initiative Supporting Group, um, and the project title was uh, uh, Empowering Feminist Resource in the Regions of Georgia. Um, despite the fact that there has been a positive um, change in uh, the publicity of feminist actors during the last several years, feminist agenda has been focused on the has been focused towards the capital of Georgia and not so much towards the regions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, problems that exist in the regions and critical actors um, um, or um, some critical problems that exist, they have not been uh, spotted by mainstream and digital media. Therefore, we thought uh, that it was crucial to find um, actors in the regions um, and um, empower them in order to give them voice um, so that they uh, voice their concerns, mm. uh, their problems. Um, and the project was um, especially important in this direction because the beneficiaries can become the agents of change in their respective um, communities and regions and also serve as an example to those who are still searching for um, uh, new tools and mechanisms how to make their voices heard. Um, so um, I would now like uh, to introduce you to Eka Zaratelli, whose um, videos we are going to show, and uh, she will explain our cooperation more in detail because we have not been only cooperating with regard to the, um, this one particular project, but we also do have many years of experience regarding LGBTQI rights because, of course, uh, um, working on LGBTQI rights is an integral part of our gender democracy work. So please, uh, if you could show Eka's video now. I think we're about to see the next video. Yes, there we go. 
Me var rekatsiyel tedik halta inisiyatörü çıkartmıştır. Çupis ikibe bizkis direktör. Çünkü organizasyon feministlerin halta organizasyon Otxi stratejiyle bir martule bit. Bir öyle yani sahte muhakeme tarafısı bir martule ba, sahte muhakeme bir martule ba, advokatsiya, mesela me komunikatsiya da organizasyonu kanı tarafı. Hayır ki bari spondi bir öyle organizasyon romanat dayıt o sajaro diskosiyepsi homofobi sada lügubut sakit kebi şemotana da çeni erteli tapuzda beli ekal bulmalaşıyor ki bir öyle spikeri am sakit. Hayır ki bari spondan erteli tanışmam bit. Çünkü galma kurtcilet, erteli olazım şöyle bir projeti, şöyle bir ayıtko sakat olursa, lüge bu tasak etkiler tamim ettiğimiz sadat, regionulat, somak parti olarak tadetat, vimuşavet, zaliyan devri mertule bit. Am projeti ma muhtesa şöyle bir kagok etebina irveli, reprezentatyoli kuleva, sazuga doybaşı. Lüge bu adam yani bizim her tamoki de bule tamoki de bule biz kule dana kuştuysa romelit şem de gukoy sabazıso dokumentat kada ikta strateji bizda da sagek mat çünkü rahatsız yani kamusleva sahşole baska kuatlevs analizi kavuk etot lüge bu adam yani bizim komare oba sakar tuvaloshi oval ortel taçer tuvak etept Kulevas, lüge bu adam yine bir diskriminasyonu sakat oluyor. Şimdi de kulevas açıyor da zaten magal dones aramar da fizik uyarı aramet psikoloji uyarı zala da bisat sürfiton temiz evrapsi. Da saçı şat gibi badaris monişnoli kucha magaziya da ratsarunda saucari o sojaki. Somerts mesame at gilseyaris zala da bis şemt kovay bis xrim. Es faktöre bi. Fakti olarak olaz marginal uskutis lüzumlu adam yani hepsi. Ama skarda is fakt irom. Kvela zalau plebisim kone instituti. İkne bayes politika, politikosi tu eklesiya axtens manipulatsias lüzumlu tasakit kebi. Plebis kama u başu akur debodit. Cina sarçona kampanya bistros. Politik bir instrument alize basa ki tabiysa sorduysa sat lüge bu adam yani işte bodunun kant evi bir suatı am politik bir tamam şöpşi eklesiye olur tuzka mı işte o da agresyonik medebe bir tam adam yani bir ismi var Romelit Santu Harut sahip sıfırsa nadi kuadro kuadrat basuk katemoli outsile bulad sak urad gibi o da kedova baş misafir bir fakti rom. Gazileri biz, gazileri bazı muşağıba da, damuk ide bile bir şey söyleyeceğim muşağıba. Moitros hangizli stratejiyi mizan da sahulk medebas, es misi şedeki şelva verdavin ahot ertiyan olursa skama o başım ama avutu sundak cerotes, rom zaliyam tiyer türlü bebit mi vakt evet mizan. Şarşan sıha mi martule bit korda. Tanım şramlı bir tanım şramlı bir hayır bir spontan o kocayın komunikasyonu na strateji ulmi martule başı çöğe gavet region epşi ve zebdit ahal gazda kalp kalps romle bir tipne bende feministori resursi samum avul tanım şramlı bir satıştan projesi sahip kab feministori resursu biz kalm tarıva region epşi. Thank you. Thank you for showing uh, for for sharing this video with us, Lilia. Uh, one thing that Eka said in this video, uh, I found very interesting um, about that the the project is also in Armenia. As we know, Armenia is also an Eastern Partnership country, and your Tbilisi office is a regional office. Do you think that these syner these synergies between the projects in Georgia and Armenia are they uh, coincidental? Or do you notice more um, projects that have regional effects? Um, well, first of all, we do also have a branch office in Yerevan mm -hmm. and uh, a few colleagues who work there. Um, we have had many projects that we developed um, together um, and implemented together. So, um, uh, of course, these were mostly um, in direction of LGBT, uh, QI rights, um, also the feminist um, network, um, as well as working on memory politics or foreign security policy. So definitely there have been many 
uh, this kind of regional um, uh, projects. Um, also, as you know, we are a regional um, organization, so um, we also do cover uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan, definitely. Great. Um, there's another project I think you'd like to highlight for us. Um, yes, um, sure. Um, so the second project that I wanted and the direction, um, more broader way, um, uh, I want to uh, talk about today is uh, regarding our work on social ecological transformation. Well, as a green political foundation, of course, um, for us, uh, putting uh, green ideas um, uh, on the political agenda is especially important that we engage with the relevant stakeholders. Um, it should be also mentioned that um, uh, different surveys, including the survey that we also um, funded and it was implemented by the Caucasus Research Resource Center, CRC, showed that um, among uh, uh, almost 80% of the respondents emphasized that for them environmental problems are really a big problem and this um, and um, uh, it, it really affects these problems really affect them. However, we don't see that um, on the government level, so on the national or on the local level, there is adequate response to these mm. concerns. Yeah. Um, that's why we have been trying together with our partners uh, to um, put forward a um, green agenda. And here I would um, especially um, outline our work uh, in cooperation with the Social Justice Center. Uh, within our cooperation, the long-term um, aim and goal, I'm um, to say, of the project and the cooperation was to um, develop and promote uh, novel environmental uh, governance practices and concepts. And I think that the Social Justice Center managed to enrich the public mm. discourse with the um, critical ass assessment of the current um, practices that exist um, in the environmental field, and they um, tried to come up with novel and new uh, concepts regarding uh, environmental governance management, uh, and um, um, also they tried to show how environmental problems um, uh, reflect and also even deepen uh, the social and economic inequalities um, that exist in the country. So I think in um, uh, actualizing environmental topics. Um, uh, they have been very successful and uh, we are very happy as a Green Political Foundation to um, support the initiatives um, uh, that, uh, um, that uh, try to actualize these topics and put forward because these concerns, lots of people in Georgia, um, as I mentioned in the survey and also it's not the only survey that was conducted but also different, uh, so yes. Great. Uh, maybe we can now also move to the second video where our partner, uh, Nina Vinianitza, who is the executive director of the Social Justice Center, explains um, uh, more about our cooperation. Sounds like a great idea. Let's go to the video. Me var Lina Khuniani Zan, Social Justice Amartian of the Center, is Ahmed Srulebeli Director, which is an organization which shops Social Justice Amartian of the Saki Khabzan. Schmitz Lebio, Tanam Shlopt, Heinrich Pioli Spontan, Ramdenadat, Sis Miznebe, Sidebi, Romans at Shoni Organization, which shops as well as the Mishnovania, Heinrich Pioli Spontis Twist, Missy Politics Twist, the Prince of Shichon Tanam Shloba, Gulis Hops, Mushaubas, Robert Social Justice Amartian of the Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, Saki Khabzan, the counter of the logic, it comes to the serious problem. Problems or the social or some kind of bis, tennis or bis, and we must tell it. It's all the same. The only social which is carry was as a kind of bidan. The social or tennis or bis as a carry must have to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said to be said مشاور بدم اول از خرید خدا و ترام ام سکی تخبی سجاره ولش تپولی دکور ولش شم و تناری تالیا در طولی طول تاری تالیا میشنو لونی من تن رخ پولی سپندی رو ملیت سام تالیا دیدی خانی او کشوری ارگانیزاسی سپارت نوری است اول دامی مرتوله بیت مشاور است اول مثلا خرده چری تشوی آخر خب توی مشاور ایم رژیون بیشتر ولی بیت قلاز مدت داری یا نیم کامنت او بیست اینا شهر مدت قلاز مدت داد سو خب کاری مدت فری سکی تخبی رسورس بیس و تن است اول گذنات ایلا بیس سکی تخبی رسورس بیس موب او به برام ملیت سه تیم که تون خواب از عرق نیست مدت رژیون بیشی در ات سالی سامارتی ندیت سو از مدت نیش نلوان برات است اینا خدا قبض هم دیگه چون سالی به او رژیون شو مشاب تا دت قلاز مدت آبی کاری مدت فری سکی تخبی در ترتیب تاوری هم نت اولش چون توی سریس مدتی اوبل بری بیس سکی تخبی مدتی سو خیلی بیس مدتی انتر 
Ինդուստրիվ Ասորդեն իմ ջգուպեպիս տա որգանիսանցիևիս կայրթիան է մասրոմ լեպս մուշավ են ամսակ իտխապս է, ոլիտիկա դա մուշավ բարոմելից գոլից խմապս, բեյուրի սոցիալ որիչ գոպիս մոնեցի լեղոպաս չարտված մատի ինտերես Հապորձի ուղատ ունայի խոս արմոտ գրելի սաջերո պոլիտիկաշտ է սաջերո մելշ։ Thank you, Lilia, for, for sharing this uh, project with us as well from your partner organization. I've heard in both videos now um, that there is a focus on going into the regions of Georgia. Could you uh, maybe elaborate more on the need for that? Um, yes, sure. As I mentioned, uh, we quite often um, try not to be focused uh, and not to be only working on the project and partners in uh, Tbilisi, but also um, uh, trying to um, have projects and partners in the region, because it is absolutely important and crucial that the people who are living in the regions are not uh, left, uh, so to say, um, uh, uh, and they do not participate in um, uh, discussions um, uh, and also voicing their concerns because um, everything is concentrated in Phyllis and we kind of uh, felt the need to work more and to engage more uh, in the regions. Um, uh, also, uh, we have been always before COVID uh, organizing lots of uh, discussions in the uh, regions of Georgia. And I also wanted to add here one note um, yeah. that uh, um, uh, is a political foundation. Yes, of course. Mm. We also um, organize our annual Green Academy, which also Levant has been part. Um, uh, I think it was uh, the first year when uh, we organized and he was also part as, as speaker. Yes. Um, uh, so um, we also think that through organizing such events, we um, uh, are trying to promote green ideas uh, and uh, somehow involve new actors also again to your um, question in the regions of Georgia so that we are not always in Tbilisi, yeah? Yeah, it seems like a very worthwhile um, thing to do. Uh, I was wondering if the audience has any questions for Lilia at this point. If you do, please put them in the chat. If you uh, don't at the moment, you can also use the last 10 minutes of this session for a global Q&A. Um, I see no questions, so Lilia, I want to thank you very much for sharing your projects and especially the videos of the proje uh, project partners with us. Um, we will see you in the last 10 minutes for the Q&A. And now we will move on to the studio again here in New Sport. We have Astrid Frey with us from the Eduardo Frey Stichting. Astrid, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. It was very nice to be here and very interesting to have all these interesting experiences and, and uh, context from what's happening in Georgia. So. Yes, Astrid, uh, can you tell us a bit more about your foundation and the project you wish to highlight today? Yes, very happy to do so. My name is Astrid Frey. I am the program manager of the Eduardo Frey Foundation. This is a foundation that was founded in 1991, right after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, like many other political parties, uh, the CDA, the Christian Democrat, was also a party that reached out uh, to the countries uh, behind the, the former Iron Curtain to go to parties and to people to talk to them about Christian democracy, but also to start promoting uh, dem democratic processes in the country. This was a, a win-win situation in the sense that we wanted to reach out to be solid, to, to show our solidarity, but at the same time also to make sure <laughs> that we would create relationships so that we would not have again such a dictatorship, uh, dictatorship countries uh, uh, bordering uh, Europe. 
Um, the Eduardo Frey Foundation uh, works with uh, volunteers from the party, uh, trainers, people that are specifically selected with, from their uh, political background. They are former uh, mayors, um, uh, aldermen and such, that are also able to train, uh, to, train uh, to stand before a group. We work in Georgia, Ukraine, uh, many other countries uh, also. Um, and I would like to talk to you today a little bit about our leadership, Youth Leadership Laboratory. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd been working in the past uh, in Georgia before, but we stopped that collaboration and, and we renewed that one in 2018 with the Youth Leadership Laboratory. Uh, we did this uh, upon the request of the European Georgia Party and the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, mm -hmm. which is the Dutch, uh, the, the German political foundation of the CDU. Mm -hmm. um, uh, our goal of the project at that time was to empower young people and to inspire them as well, to, be, and to inspire them, but also to uh, motivate them to become active in politics. Uh, we believe that by focusing on youth, you can stimulate change and democracy from the bottom up, so to speak, and also help to create a constructive, critical mass of young people towards the political party leadership. That was the idea. Yes. And uh, what do you want the participants to take away from your sessions, the leadership skills, a change? Well, yes, we wanted to give them a notion, a sense of, okay, what are political, you know, value-based uh, value politics? So what are the different, how can your values, how can they be reflected in your political party that you choose? Mm -hmm. But also that you as a young person have a voice uh, and that you can be uh, heard. And uh, we wanted to, beside, we wanted to uh, give them that notion, but also to help them uh, capacitate or to empower them to, to, to, to be visible in the party. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a bit more about how you develop your programs? Um, I hear value-based in your speech. I'm wondering uh, if, if it comes from the partner organizations, if you uh, take away the values or use a sparring partner of some kind. Well, maybe it's important to know that uh, the CDA is a member of the European People's Party and the, the, uh, the parties that we trained uh, in mm -hmm. Ukraine, uh, or not in Ukraine, in Georgia, my apologies, are a member of the European People's Party. So yes. European Georgia and United National Movement uh, are both members of, uh, of the EPP. So uh, they are part of our family, so to speak. And because of that, we talk to them about... Yeah, what are your values? It's very important for us. And how do you relate that? How do you mm -hmm. translate that into concrete action? What we wanted to do with the youth is to engage with them in a relationship. So it's not just one training for a weekend. We wanted to make a sequel out of that. So, yeah. so we selected, uh, the, the, the participants were selected by the European Georgia in collaboration with the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe I can tell a little bit about the process of the, the setup of the, of the project is such that... Um, we, we gave two trainings in, the re in two different regions for a group of young people. Uh, in total, it was 70 people. And from these groups, we, we picked the, the best of that were invited to a follow-up training uh, a few months later on. In between, they were asked to write an essay as well. Uh, because in the first training, we also talked about problem analysis. So uh, it's about empowering and capacity the youth, meaning that it's important for them also to look at what is happening in your own environment. What kind of problems do you see that you think need to be addressed? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things I wrote down in an essay. Then the 10 best of the best of came, came again to Tbilisi from both regions. So this way, connecting uh, the, the groups from the different regions together. It's like, uh, I think it was the Heinrich Boll Foundation yes. is also we're very much focused on going into the region, so not staying in Tbilisi only. Mm -hmm. And from there, we, uh, we picked, it, picked again the best of. Uh, we made a, a competition out of it, and this group went to Brussels, uh, to, to, the, to the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. Uh, where they um, had to, they had to thoroughly prepare. It wasn't just a fun visit. They had to really um, sit down, get an understanding of the European Union, how it works, but also what they wanted to ask and what they wanted to um, to to to point out or their message, what their message was to the people that they were going to talk to. And what kind of people were they talking to? They were the talking to members of Parliament. Yes. They were talking to the, the the the Commission, members of the Commission as well. And uh, I myself wasn't able to join the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, uh, guided them as well. But what came back from that, what I thought was very important, was a total amazement mm -hmm. about the fact that we were actually listened to. So it wasn't uh, you were sat down and you talked to this member of parliament. 
or not talk to, but normally in Georgia, they would say, they would sit down and they would have to listen to the leader, but this time they felt they were actually engaging in a dialogue. So this was very, very um, inspirational for them to, to also take back to mm. Georgia. And this would be then something that they would do, but they will demand as well from people that they speak to? What do you mean demand? Um, it, it is an expect, now that they um, have had this experience, they will want to continue having this type of dialogue. Yeah, it's an eye-opener for them. Hey, mm -hmm. this is also a possibility. It's, it's, this is how the European Union worked. I mean, remember, this party is called European Georgia. So this is how the European Union works. It is possible. Let's take this notion and this idea back and, and, and use that also in our, own, uh, in our own party. And then at the same time, they had a, a positive vision of Europe as mm -hmm. well. So it's a way to bring Europe closer yes. to the participants and the young people of Georgia. Also. The young people, what, what kind of age bracket are we talking Between about? Between uh, 25 and 30 years old. Ah, great, yeah. great. Not even younger than that, yeah. How would you measure the impact of such a project? Yeah, it's a pity, Hoba. We had invited uh, somebody from, from Georgia to come in and speak also. Uh, she, is the, she was the coordinator from the European Georgia for this project. Uh, she was asked to come and speak also on behalf of the participants. Um, uh, when I prepared for this meeting with her, she told me that one of the measures of success and also for us is the, the level of engagement that the youth uh, then have after uh, there are training with, in, in politics. And she's saying that a number of members, a number of people that we train yeah. are still active on the local level as wow. councillors or within the party somehow. So this is for me important, especially in this current day and age where there's a lot of mistrust and the idea of democracy is, is difficult for, for, for young people. And these people in the difficult context of European Georgia as a party, but also um, the political context of Georgia itself, they dare to, to, to, you know, to step up and, uh, and, and, and try and make the best out of it. So this is, um, for me, an important measurement of success. Yeah, that's, uh, it seems like a very hopeful measure of success <laughs> as well. I, I think uh, it's been kind of the elephant in the room, but COVID-19, of course, also affected the way political foundations do their work. Um, was there any effect on this project particularly? Yeah, it was a pity because, you know, European Georgia is in a difficult situation uh, as well. They, uh, as a party, decided not to be a member of parliament mm -hmm. anymore due to the given situation. The boycott. The, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the Conrad now Stiftung is also saying that it's you know it's it's it's made a dialogue more difficult, mm -hmm. so we have had to uh, to step down a little bit with our engagement in this project, um, and this is also I think because of COVID we had mm -hmm. planned uh, a next group to come to the Hague, uh, but this uh, they're still waiting, so we we, we we're hopeful uh, that they can still come, but it's made it more difficult. Yes, mm -hmm. what we did do though is we tried to reach out to the youth that we trained yeah. because I. I think that's important also to create a network and to maintain some sort of relationship, at least at the individual level, because let's be honest, we're all small foundations. Yeah. So you have to be pra pragmatic and realistic as well as of the changes that you can, can, uh, can, uh, can stimulate or drive. Um, uh, but we try to stay connected to the young people that we trained, and we also set up a mentorship online, some political me time uh, for the young people that they could uh, use uh, to talk to politicians uh, from, from their own country or from abroad, from the Netherlands, to discuss some of the challenges that they saw and also talk about leadership leadership. Uh, what promotion. does this uh, platform look like? Sounds very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's an online platform. We're just uh, we're just setting it up. We started in during the COVID period yeah. where we connect uh, people. We even have somebody from Serbia who's uh, now in Mexico. That's that's a good thing about COVID as well. Yes, where you can connect uh, uh, politicians or or, or or coaches to uh, to to the to the young people. We can mm -hmm. do it as a group, or you know some sort of intervention group or uh, one on one. Mm. Yeah. And and what kind of uh, if you look at where the participants are right now, where do you hope to see them in a few years' time? What do you hope will be on their path with such programs as these? Well, I suppose uh, I hope that they will they will continue to to to to to use their you know to look at their values. Mm -hmm what they think is important to keep on raising their voice and to persevere because it's a very difficult situation i suppose at the moment in georgia it's not very easy to stand out to stand out or to stand up and uh, and continue so i hope that they somehow 
have the energy to, to, to, to continue on the path of, of democ democ democratic, uh, democratization, which is, not, which is not easy also in the Netherlands. So mm -hmm. in a way, one of my uh, wishes would be to, to stay connected to them so also, as also to make the connection with politicians here in the Netherlands, uh, young politicians in the Netherlands or young people from our CDEA uh, youth um, wing, to, to make them aware that this is, uh, d democracy is not something that's a solid rock. It needs to be nurtured all the time. Uh, we don't need to, we should not take it for granted. So this is something that the Dutch politicians, the young people can also learn from the Georgians. So uh, I would like to maintain the connection as well somehow. Well said. And, and how, what kind of capacity building projects would you like to see more of in order to maintain this connection? Yeah, well, this is a question I also asked to, to Tiona, who was yes. supposed to speak, because this was the question you'd prepared for her. And um, she says that uh, the last decade has shown that political parties are facing difficulties in attracting new party members, and in particular, young people. On yeah. this ground, projects like Youth Leadership Academy is a great opportunity to increase youth political participation and strengthen connection between young leaders across the country. Across, yeah. In my opinion, Tiona says, young leadership, the Youth Leadership Laboratory is an ideal model of the capacity building projects for the following reasons. It's, it inspires team spirit. It gathers young representatives from different regions of Georgia. A project is implemented through interactive thematic trainings delivered by political leaders and EFF trainers. And it gives a chance to listen to the trainers from different countries and get closer to the EU. You build a network, a, long, a bigger network. And it motivates young people by offering them competition and awarding winners with study visits to EU institutions. One of the people that went to Brussels came back and said, I'm going to improve my English. I want to do this more often. <laughs> So yeah, um, for the European Georgia, this was it wasn't very. Uh, they don't have their own training institutes, mm -hmm. so uh, and it's not very common in in many countries. So this is this is providing a good opportunity for the young people uh, to gain some knowledge. Whereas you know, not just on the top level, but also on the lower regions of the political party. Mm -hmm. And then there is some some kind of growth in all in all the layers yeah. of political party. So that what capacity building really wants to achieve in a way. Yeah. But still, it's a it's a it's a it's a slow path. Huh? I mean, yeah. uh, a lot of people uh, get disappointed. They move out. Some of them go on. So these are these are the ones that uh, uh, we you hope to uh, to to inspire and motivate as well. Mm, to stay and to keep uh, staying engaged in the political yeah. situation. Yeah, and even even if they are disappointed by their own party, they either engage in another party or they still move on within their party that they are part of to to build. To build, to build it as they would want to see it. Yeah, that sounds uh, really great, Astrid. I think you have a video as well. Yeah, I have this small video, just a, more like an atmosphere, uh, giving a, a. It's also a good way to end. I think uh, the, the whole session. Uh, I'd like to to to show. Uh, it's, it's just less than a minute. It's uh, pictures and uh, of the trainings that we gave. Uh, we give for young people, and uh, I won't tell you who they are, but the Georgian ones are there as well. So enjoy watching. Great. I think we're going to the video now. Thank you. I think uh, it was great to, to see this video with all these smiling faces at the trainings at the capacity building projects. Um, we are now at the last block of this session. I would like to open the floor for any and all questions. Um, if uh, you have a question, please put it in the chat. I will receive your name and then I will give you the floor. We had a question earlier from Iseru. Um, and again, you can direct your question to any of the speakers. Just make sure to tell us which one. Um, Iseru, are you still there? Yes, I'm still Welcome. there. Uh, I would like to direct my question to Levan. 
Great. We know that the globe right now, there is too much use of money in elections. And I wanted to understand from his experience and expertise whether there whether the, is such a thing also in the Georgian politics. Um, if uh, I understood the question as being around the world, there are scandals involving money in uh, politics, uh, which de uh, delegitimizes democracy. What impact is money having in the Georgian politics, Levan, from Eseru? Yes, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it has a very large impact because of the number of factors uh, as a rule. Well, Georgia traditionally has this um, uh, situation, whereas the ruling party is always able to wield far superior financial leverage uh, in the pre-electoral campaigns than anybody else. Uh, and given the social and economic um, uh, difficulties that the country is ex experiencing, we have very high numbers of poverty, very high numbers of uh, malnutrition in children, very high numbers of people living below the living minimum. Uh, so, of course, uh, financial resources, financial muscle plays a, a key role. And as you rightly mentioned, it also undermines uh, trust to political processes. Uh, just a few examples in the last parliamentary elections, for example, uh, just in the four uh, months, in September, from September 2020 till the beginning of December 2020, uh, overall the the major political parties spent about uh, about nine to ten million euros just in four months, and in the electoral period the ruling party spent about five million euros, uh, uh, which is uh, far outstripping the expenditure of uh, everybody else altogether. So the ruling party spent 5 million and the rest of the opposition spent about 3.5 million euros. And we're talking uh, uh, about the country which officially has 36% uh, of unemployment rate. But if you, if you poll public opinion, uh, more than 60% of people say they consider themselves unemployed because they don't have valid contracts and a steady source of income. So this is the situation, you know, whereas political elite is uh, lavishing these extraordinary expenditures during the campaigns and for a range of political actors, it had become uh, a source of steady income. Well, now that's what is legitimate, but we also have a situation when illicit funding, illicit financing plays uh, a decisive role, including uh, bribes that cannot be officially proved, but we all know that exists. Uh, and, and one more example of the role of money is that the government itself is the single biggest employer in many areas, many regions of the country. So when the government is prepared to leverage the employees for partisan ends, you know, by either threatening them with dismissal or a, a cutting of uh, social assistance or other benefits they are receiving. This has a very huge impact, very decisive impact on people who do trust the courts, do not have the depoliticized and objective law enforcement, and are dependent on the goodwill of the government or local uh, authorities. And COVID just made the, all of this uh problems even worse thank you thank you levan very much uh we have a question from kirsten kirsten you have the floor i think this question is directed to all speakers uh, yes uh, sorry my camera is not working at the moment um i just was wondering because of the uh, oncoming uh, local election so you can can you elaborate a little bit what is this important for your work or not or what is the um, uh, feeling at the moment in, in relation to the, this election. Great. Maybe, Lilia, yeah. you would like to answer the question first. How does the election on 2 October affect your work? Um, yes, in many directions. Maybe I'll just uh, name a few so that I, I don't take um, um, others time. Um, Levin mentioned very well the toxic um, environment, that um, pre-election environment that we are currently in. Um, there is a huge polarization in society, and this has a huge impact on our work because 
We are trying, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, to support initiatives that um, create platforms for public participation on the issues such as so social ecological transformation, feminism, and so on. And when uh, we have to um, deal with everyday problems um, and we have to deal uh, with um, um, things like this massive surveillance, yes, um, that still needs to be investigated, but um, uh, then the um, uh, work that we are doing on green topics, on feminism, all these mm. are all of a sudden considered not so important because physical safety of people um, are under question, yes, and this uh, massive interference in um, um, people's lives, personal lives, um, uh, are it's yeah uh, the most important issue, and all the long term projects and goals and work then becomes all of a sudden hindered, yes. Um, uh, and of course, if the um, uh, far right groups continue um, and even become more, um, so to say, powerful, our partners um, who work with us on feminism and LGBTQI rights, their um, their safety is, you know, uh, at stake. Uh, um, and. Uh, um, um, and physical safety, I mean, in this case, yes, first of all, which is um, so important. So, of course, it has uh, huge implications um, uh, for us, definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Lilia. Maybe uh, Leifan or somebody at this table would like to answer this question as well. As well? No, I couldn't. Hear. Great. Yeah, of course, this is, this is, uh, these are very important elections for uh, for the country, they are um, uh, far more than just the local elections, but uh, there are few few things to also see uh, in this process. Number one, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I think uh, government has a huge legitimacy problem. Mm -hmm. And if they cannot reestablish that legitimacy through a um, uh, credible electoral process, and uh, public trust in the integrity of the electoral process, etc. This is going to lead to further polarization and further aggravation of the fragmentation of Georgia's political society and radicalization. And uh, I don't want to be a doomsday prophet here, but uh, I am quite afraid of uh, serious civil unrest uh, in Georgia with yeah. far right groups becoming a center stage uh, for uh, for violence against more pro democracy oriented yeah. organizations here. Uh, also, uh, the opposition tried to portray these elections as a referenda for the future of Georgia. Yes, I concur that in a way. I think this is this is kind of a referenda, but not only about that. It's a referenda about the entire political class of the country, which because they are so polarized because they have made politics so toxic, because they have antagonized each other so much. I think they are undermining jointly the democratic foundations of the country. Mm -hmm. And I think through polarization, and I think for the Georgian society, it's also a referenda uh, whether they trust the entire political class or altogether. I don't believe they're going to pass it about the sea levels uh, this yeah. time. So we'll see, we'll see, but... Um, this is where we stand. Thank you. Thank you to you both. I have a question I received from Nadia, also about the elections. Nadia, are you in our uh, Zoom meeting? If not, I can ask the question myself. Uh, Nadia was wondering whether uh, you have any tips or advice for observers during the elections. Leva, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. My advice would be to uh, really, really be present uh, at all stages of the electoral process. What we last saw in the reports of uh, international observers, uh, the report started with a statement that uh, not all observers could observe and be present during the vote counting and tabulation process. And I think this is very important. And this is where the most of the irregularities appear uh, in the electoral process. So I think once the observers are there, I think uh, we should all try to make sure that they are able to follow up through the entire electoral process and then to form their own independent analysis and not rely on external information, which may lead them to mm -hmm. some miscalculated observations there. This is key. Of course, stay safe. Georgia is a uh, red zone for COVID. I think governments 
decisions to use uh, um, anti-pandemic measures politically rather than science-based has made Georgia a dangerous place. Uh, today, everything in the country is open, but the schools are shut. And I think this reflects, unfortunately, the, the, the very political and, and weird nature of, of, of the attitudes toward uh, doing things in, in this country. But please do come for the elections. Please do come. These are very important. And without international observations, it will be very hard for democracy groups to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Levan. Lilia, you're also based in Tbilisi. Do you have some additional advice? Um, yes, um, uh, I agree with what um, Levan said, but I would also add uh, and encourage uh, also observers, if they can, to go to um, those regions where we have ethnic and religious minorities uh, in order to ensure that um, uh, they are not only concentrated in Tbilisi and also to ensure that um, irregularities and um, the cases of possible um, uh, threat and so on are detected and um, yes um, and of course uh, um, to be in close contact with um, our um, organizations local organizations that do monitoring and observation election observation um, like um, East Fed and um, Georgian Young Lawyers Association so to be in close contact uh, with um, local organizations uh, and to go to the regions where we have ethnic and religious minorities I thank you thank you suggest. Lilia, that's a very clear uh, mission for us. I have a question I, uh, I think that I want to end this session with. Um, and first, I would like to ask Ostrid and Chris whether uh, what you think the specific value is of you working with political parties and foundations in Georgia as opposed to other democratic actors. Well, we are part of the triangle, aren't we? You have political parties, you have government, and then you have civil society. So you cannot have democracy without these three. So I think it's very important for political parties to mm. engage with other political parties in a sort of uh, capacity or development projects, but from the political perspective. Uh, and that's the contribution that we can make from political party to political party. Uh, uh, important uh, contribution to democratization in the countries. Yeah. Mm. Chris, do you have a... Yeah, I think we are, as an uh, international foundation, uh, an eccentric motivation to, uh, um, to those parties to create a functioning democracy and to, uh, to, to really oppose this uh, democratic decline we are now seeing. Mm -hmm. So we have a very important role in that. Yes, and uh, we, we are now joined, of course, by the Christian Democrat family, the liberal family, and the green family, which is uh, different ideologies, right, that can coexist then uh, as in, Euro in the European Union, but then also in Georgia, where you are all doing uh, developing projects and strengthening these ideologies and this multi-party perspective. Uh, maybe Lilia and Levon have uh, some thoughts as well on what the specific added value is of having the political foundations be active in this democratic process. Lilia, I see you. Um, yes, um, I would um, um, say several things. Well, first of all, it is very important to have pluralistic um, mm -hmm. discussions on the topics and to have different political foundations from different um, um, uh, who supports different uh, topics because that makes the whole process much more interesting and pluralistic and definitely this is um, very important um, but also to uh, jointly I think we can contribute to having uh, and supporting Georgia's democratic political culture yes and mm -hmm. to supporting less polarization um, discussion um, and having these different platforms where we could engage on Georgia's democracy, um, of the real problems, uh, yeah, um, economic problems, as you know, the country um, has severe economic problems. But also, I would um, um, re recall one of the examples from um, our cooperation, um, I mean, German political foundations in this regard, we cooperated um, uh, on election compass um, uh, and um, developed this interesting tool to help citizens of this country to better understand where do they stand politically, yes, which um, ideology is close to them. And there were some questions, um, yes, and mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, people who use this um, compass can um, somehow um, answer these questions. And uh, um, yes, I, I think so that it's also there are cases of collaboration and um, I think um, jointly um, uh, our like joint goal would be to contribute to more democratic political culture in this country. 
thank you. Thank you, Lilia Levin. Is there anything you'd like to add as last? I'd say that I see uh, European political foundations as intangible part of Georgia's democratic uh, progress. And at this moment uh, of uh, Georgia's chance to remain in democracy, which is being questioned right now, it's not as certain as it was before. So I think it is uh, as crucial as it could ever have been the support and in engagement of European foundations. I mean, our organization, as I mentioned, sprang out of, of the Dutch uh, uh, NGO, which, uh, um, uh, which um, supported us for the long time. And there is a wealth of knowledge, experience, a huge spillover effect uh, into Georgia and in other uh, countries of our region from European Foundation. So mm -hmm. this is a, uh, this is key. This is vital, as I mentioned. Yeah, well, you are our key allies in, in, in the work for democracy in Georgia and democratic progress. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's an that's an urge for uh, being involved and uh, uh, staying uh, in Georgia and uh, being active. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you, Levan. Um, and uh, as I, I like to end it on the note of, of the European political foundations, the Georgian partners, civil society as being allies to each other and partners in this process. Uh, I think that's a wonderful way to also close this session. Thank you, everybody, to the speakers, first of all, for participating. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming in from Georgia. I'd like to thank the audience for their engagement and for uh, being here with us as well. And I would like to thank the team here at ANOP for helping us with going through this program. We will be sending a follow-up email with information on all speakers and uh, more information, the link of the website, should you want to be in touch. Um, there is more sessions for the Democracy Week. You can check it out on the website and register to attend. From now, for now, this is it from the ANOP session, live from The Hague. Thank you and have a great day. Goodbye.